Right, in this video, we're going to look at the concept of a vector projection. What is it? How do we calculate it? Why do we care? Why is it useful? We'll look at a simple two-dimensional example. Um, we'll look at how to calculate it on the CAS calculator. And then we'll look at some really nice 3D examples where we find the distance from a point to a plane and the distance between two skew lines in three dimensions. I'll put some chapters in the video so you can cut to whichever bit you're interested okay. in. Let's do it. Return to the Mac. Get up what it is, what it does, what it is, what it is. So what Looking for is a vector projection? We take two vectors A and B. If we want to project A onto B, what we do is construct a line at a right angle, uh, a right angle to B, and then find this vector here in the direction of B. That is the vector projection of A onto B. We can also call it a vector resolute. One way to understand it is think about the sun shining directly down onto B, which is like the flat ground. And then if we think about the length of the shadow on the ground that will be projected by the sun, that's the idea with the vector resolute. Another way to think about it or another application is, imagine A is a force vector, okay? We've got a heavy object on the ground. We're pulling up at a diagonal to the ground, um, but we, we can't pull the heavy object off the ground. So the object is gonna slide along the ground. And the amount of force that's traveling in the direction of the ground, there is going to be the vector projection or vector resolute uh, of A in the direction of B. All right, so with the formula, the formula, which is not on your formula sheet, unfortunately, is A dot B over B dot B times the vector B. There's two forms which are equivalent. The other form is the dot product of A and the unit vector of B times the unit vector of B. A unit vector, remember, is a vector uh, with length one. So we just take the original vector, divide it by its length, and that gives us the unit vector. Now, why those two are equivalent, b dot b is actually the length of b squared. And the unit vector is b over the length of b. So what we have in the left formula, well, we have the length of b twice there. So we can take each of those b's on the numerator, divide them by their lengths to get unit vectors. So before we talk about where the formula comes from, let's look at what we call the scalar projection uh, or the scalar resolute. And essentially that is the length of the vector resolute. Uh, it's probably easiest to understand using the second formula because a unit vector has length one, then the length of that one is just going to be uh, a dot unit vector of b. In the first form, a dot b over the length of b. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind that the scalar projection, even though I said it was a length, it actually can be negative if the vectors are pointing in opposite directions. We'll have a look at that in the example. All right, so where does this formula come from? Imagine we've got the same diagram and we're trying to find, let's say we're trying to find the scalar projection. So we're trying to find the length of u there. If we know the length of a, and let's say we know the angle between the two vectors, well, we could find that using trigonometry, using cosine as adjacent over hypotenuse. Now we also have a handy formula for cosine of theta, which comes from the scalar product. Okay, scalar product a dot b uh, is length of a times length of b times cosine theta. So we can replace cosine theta in the formula there with a dot b over length of a times length of b. And then if we were trying to solve for the length of u, well, length of a will cancel and we'll get a dot b over length of b, which is what we had for the scalar resolute formula. Now to use that to find the vector projection, uh, then imagine we're trying to find this vector u. Uh, we want to go parallel to b and how far do we want to go? Well, we need to know what fraction um, of the length of b is the length of u. So length of u over length of b times vector b and that will give us our vector projection formula. All right, let's take an example now. So let's say we have two two-dimensional vectors. The wording here is slightly different, but essentially it's asking the same thing. Perpendicular components, one of which is parallel to Q. So if we draw the diagram roughly to scale, I wonder if you can visualize where the vector projection of P onto Q would be in this diagram. What we need to do is construct, uh, continue this line in the opposite direction, then construct our right angle, and the vector projection is this length here then the perpendicular component is going to be um, perpendicular to Q. And so the, the parallel plus the perpendicular component give us vector P. So we're breaking P into two parts, perpendicular components, 
one of which is parallel to q. All right, so to apply our formula, p dot q over q dot q times vector q. We calculate dot product by multiplying um, components and then adding. So negative two times five plus four times negative one. Uh, for q dot q, we'll have five squared plus negative one squared all multiplied by the vector q. Okay, so this is giving us a vector, be negative 14 over 26 times vector q. Uh, we can simplify that one down to negative seven over 13. And if we look at the diagram, um, well, it looks roughly right. Okay, so we're going in the opposite direction of q, that's why we have a negative, but we're not going as far. Okay, seven thirteenths, uh, we're going seven thirteenths of the length of q in the opposite direction. Now, for the perpendicular component, we can use subtraction there. If we want to get vector v, we can use vector subtraction. Either we go backwards u and then forwards p, or we write it as p minus u. Now, in order to do that subtraction, um, we're minusing ne negative 7 thirteenths. We would have to expand out the brackets, um, use a common denominator of thirteenths. And this is going to be uh, a little bit tedious, but hopefully we'll get our answer there. If we look at the diagram and check, um, we're going 9 thirteenths in the positive x direction, 41 thirteenths in the positive y direction, looks roughly correct. All right, so we can check it on the calculator. This is the TI Inspire. And it's really nice because we can define the vectors um, just using negative two comma four to define uh, vector P inside a square bracket and similar for vector q. Now the dot product command is under menu, um, matrix and vector, we've got to scroll down to vectors and the dot product command is there somewhere. Uh, we can also just type dot p, okay? So dot p, p comma q, which are the vectors we've defined above. Okay, so p dot q over q dot q times vector q and there it is, that is what we had for the vector projection. For the perpendicular component, uh, we subtract that from P and we get uh, nine over 13 and 45 over 13. Okay, we better correct <laughs> a bit of an arithmetic error there. All right, so for the next example, I think this is a really nice application of vector projection and it's finding the distance of a point to a plane. So if we have a point, say one, two, four, and we want to find the distance to this plane, um, the nice thing is we can take any point at all on the plane. To find an easy point on the plane, let's just sub in y equals zero, z equals zero, we'll find x has to be one. So one, zero, zero can be our point on the plane. And if we call that q, and then vector, find vector p, q, and what we want to do with that is find the vector projection of PQ that is perpendicular to the plane. Now we already know a vector perpendicular to the plane and that's the normal vector. The normal vector is really easy to get from the Cartesian form of the plane equation. It's just the coefficients of X, Y, and Z. So we can pull out our normal vector here. And then what we want to do is we want to find the distance. Okay, so the vector projection, what we want really is the scalar projection. So if we use our scalar projection formula, uh, we want the projection of PQ onto the normal vector. Again, really easy to calculate on the calculator, just define PQ, define N. And we'll get our distance, shortest distance from the points to the plane. All right, next example, which is similar, slightly more complicated, uh, is the distance between two skew lines. So skew lines um, are two lines in, in 3D space that do not intersect, but are also not parallel. These two lines, which are defined in vector form here, it's maybe not that obvious that they, that they don't intersect, but if we um, represent a diagram on GeoGebra and just move it around a bit, we can probably see that they don't. Um, and what we're going to do is again, use a vector projection method and they're not in the same plane, um, but there is a plane that is parallel to both of these lines. And how we can find that plane is to take the cross product of two vectors parallel to each line. And there, that's really easy to get from the form of the equations that we have. So in this example, um, line R1 will be parallel to vector two 
1, 1, and line R2, we parallel to vector 1, 3, negative 1. So if we find the cross product of those vectors, that will give us the normal vector of the plane that is parallel to both of those two lines. Okay, so let's show the plane here. And if we can move it around a bit, hopefully we can sort of see that that plane is going to be parallel to both of those lines. So now what we can do is find any vector PQ where P is one point on the first line and Q is one point on the second line and find the vector resolute or vector projection um, of PQ onto our normal vector again. Points P and Q are also really easy to get from the form of the lines we have there. So we can just take those vectors out the front. So for R1, let's take P as one, zero, negative two. And for R2, let's take uh, Q to be one, one, zero. And then vector PQ will be a vector uh, from that point on line R1 to the point on line R2. Again, we're looking for a distance, so we can just use the scalar projection formula, uh, define our vector PQ, define our vector normal vector, and then away we go to get the distance. So another really nice application of vector projections in 3D geometry. I hope you found the video helpful. Right. Okay. See ya. <laughs> Return to the Mac. Get up what it is, what it does, what it is, what it isn't. Looking for a better way to get.